Hi everyone, today we're going to talk about layout strategy. And have you seen fruits placed next to bleach in supermarkets? Definitely not, because there is reason to that. So introducing our four members, we have Cheryl, Sander, Jonathan, and also Kevin, who is going to present about the material. So learning about layout strategy is actually necessary for marketing purposes because its main objective is to develop an effective and efficient layout that will meet the competitive requirements of the company. So what is considered a good layout? So first we have high utilization of space, equipment, and people. So the purpose of this is to make sure that the space is efficient enough for workers to work easily. Second, we have improved flow of material and people. Similar to the first one, this is more focused on material and also the co-workers. Third, we have flexibility. Flexibility focuses on how flexible the workspace can get, how they communicate with people, how they interact, and also likewise. Fourth, we have improved customer and client relations. So in order to have a good relationship with the customers or client, I think the company must have a good layout to adapt. In total, there are seven most common layout types that you can find in any workforce place. First, we have office layout. Second is retail layout. Third is fixed position layout. Fourth is warehouse layout. Fifth is process oriented layout. Sixth is the work cell layout. And the seventh, last one, is the product oriented layout. Okay, first we're starting off with the office layout. An office layout is the systematic arrangement of office equipment, machines, and furniture and providing adequate space to office personnel for regular performance of work with efficiency. It requires the grouping of workers, their equipment, spaces to provide for comfort, safety, and movement of information. The main distinction of office layout is the importance placed on the flow of the information. Next is the retail layout. The term retail layout is used for how retailers set up their product displays, fixtures, and merchandise. It is a strategy to influence a customer's experience when inside your store. Because how your potential customers interact with your product really affects their purchase behavior. P.S. Common retail stores like Best Buy, Walmart, and Target use racks to display their products. So racks are really common in retail stores. The third one is warehouse layout. With a warehouse layout, your organization can customize warehouse movement and increase overall inventory accessibility. A warehouse layout is the plan design of a warehouse to streamline overall operation. The right layout should have to help to improve the flow of production and also distribution. The fourth one is fixed position layout. Fixed position layout is the project that remains in one place and workers and equipments come to that one work area. Examples of this type of project are ship, highway, and also aircrafts. The techniques for addressing the fixed position layout are complicated by three factors. First, there is limited space at virtually all sites. Second, at different stages of a project, different, ma different materials are needed. Third one is the volume of mater materials needed is dynamic. For example, is the rate of the use of steel panels. The fifth one is process-oriented layout. A process-oriented layout can seamlessly handle a wide variety of products and services. This is the traditional way to support a product differentiation strategy. It is most efficient when making products with different requirements or when handling customers, patients, or clients with different needs. In process layout, the workstations and machinery are not arranged according to a particular product production sequence. Instead, there is an assembly of similar operations or similar machinery in each department. For example, is a drill department and also a paint department. A work cell layout is the arrangement of equipments and workstations in a manufacturing setting. The goal is to improve efficiency and productivity by reducing the time and effort required to complete tasks. Key elements to consider when designing a work cell layout include the flow of materials, the sequences of tasks, ergonomics, and flexibility. A well-designed work cell layout can greatly improve an organization's efficiency and productivity. 
product-oriented layout is the arrangement of workstations and equipment based on the products being produced. It is often used in mass production settings and allows for specialization of labor which can increase efficiency and productivity. However, it may not be as flexible as other layouts when it comes to switching between different products or product lines. This layout is a good choice for organizations that produce a high volume of a single product or small number of products of similar products. So that is a bibliography of our video and thank you for watching till the end. Bye bye!